gesture. We don't need the lamb. The lamb is used strictly as a remembrance of what our ancestors did. Because we have to understand that in Israel, in Egypt, they will celebrate this Passover. This was to per, per get them ready to accept the Messiah. Because right now, the Messiah is our Passover lamb. He is the one who is covering us with his blood. Just as they did in ancient Egypt, they took the lamb's blood and put it on the doorpost. So too are we taking in the blood of the lamb, Yahweh Shai, some of you know him as Jesus, and putting them over the door of our heart. So the Passover is all about pretty much obedience. You have to remember that. Passover is about obedience. It's more so about doing what God told them to do. If the Israelites did not take the blood and put it over their doorposts. Then that death angel would have came in and sm smitten their firstborn as well. But those who were obedient survived. And many of the Egyptians didn't believe and they died. So if you remember in the beginning God gave Adam a commandment. Don't you eat in this tree. If you eat from this tree, you're going to die. They broke that law. They ate from that tree and they died. Not that day, but they death entered the world. So as a remembrance that death enters the world because of sin, breaking the law, not doing what God tells you to do, you saw that when we read about it in Exodus, how the lamb's blood was put over the doorposts, a commandment given by God to Moses, to the people, and saying that if you do this, you'll be spared. If you don't, then the death angel will come in. 
So when you put the blower over your doorpost, the death angel passed over. And that's where we get the word Passover. See, he passed over the Israelites, but he smote the firstborn of Egypt. And from that moment began the Israelites' deliverance from Egypt, the house of bondage. So, when we do what he says, we'll survive, we'll live, we'll, we'll thrive. If we don't, then we're breaking his laws and death is upon us. So, reason we're doing this is to remember what our ancestors did and as the Most High Son, he said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. So, he's the Lamb now, we're doing this in remembrance of him and we're just going to have a feast because even Paul said, after the death and resurrection of the Son of God, Yahweh Shai, many of you know him as Jesus, I just want to keep saying that, that he, Paul said, he has to attend the feast. So it's not done away with. Even Paul had to do it. He said, by all means must I attend this feast. So by all means, we should attend the feast. So I got some lamb here. We're gonna have our unleavened bread. We're gonna have a wine. And we're gonna pretty much take communion. That's what you've heard that before, right? Mm -hmm. Communion? We're pretty much gonna have communion. Lamb has to be <laughs> Lamb has to be cooked with fire, roasted with fire. You can't boil it. You can't do anything else with it. Now, there's a reason why. Again, all this is to prepare us for what's going to happen in the future. Because you got to think, thousand years later, after the first Passover, came the Son of God, and then He became our Passover Lamb. So. But no more sacrificing of, of bull and goats and rams has to be done. He's that sacrifice. I like that you nod your head. Yes, <laughs> he's that sacrifice. So we keep the feast, but we remember certain things that had to be done because he said the lamb has to be roasted or cooked with fire. Because, and this is something you might not realize, some of you people who are studying this may not realize even that's symbolic. Why does it have to be roasted with fire? Do you understand it has to be roasted with fire? Because this represents the Lamb of God. When he died, did he not descend into the lower realms of earth, into the fiery pits of hell, to teach to the spirits in hell, in prison, and then later on they came up out of, out of the hell? He was roasted with fire, technically. He went down into the fire. So that's why this has to be roasted with fire. Again, a foreshadow of what's to come. Did you know that? Did you know that, uh, well, Peter talks about it. That the Lord went down and, oh, I meant to have her cut there. When, I did a dog once. So. Hmm? You should have it. You <laughs> should have it. You should it. You'd appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, you should love it. <laughs> Jesus, the Hebrew the name for him is Yahushai. <laughs> have you heard that before? No, I'm not that time. You heard Yeshua? <laughs> I can talk, I can tell you more about that. Okay. So, Yeshua is a modern way of saying it. Mm -hmm. Yahawashai is the ancient, they call it the ancient Hebrew. Mm -hmm. It would have been the Hebrew that Jesus, Yahawashai, Yeshua would have had spoke. Mm -hmm. When he said his name to Paul, that's what he said. He said, Yah he would have said Yahawashai. So you'll hear me say that all the time. Don't be like concerned, like, well, who's he talking about? Some strange. Talk to, we're talking about the same yeah, person, yeah, yeah, Son no. of God. We're not, we're not in no kind of weird religion I or anything. I understand. I cool. understand. Real good. Real good. Real good. Real good. All right. Yeah. I just thought I'd make that clear. Yeah. 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 Read nice and loud so that way the camera can hear you. That's the first verse, please. And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while, 
and then took his leave of the brethren <laughs> and sailed thence into Syria and with him Priscilla and Aquila have shorn his head in Centrea where okay. he had a vow. What verse are you on? You, you, that, you? Was, that was just 18. All right, go ahead and read, uh, was it 21? So he's all there, so you know, that's Paul. I want you guys to hear that's Paul. He's about to, he's about to take a lead now. Verse 21. But bade them farewell, saying, mm -hmm. I must by all means keep this feast yes. that cometh in Jerusalem. There you go. For, Stop uh, right there. Okay. By all means, I must keep this feast that what? <clears throat> that cometh in Jerusalem? That comes in Jerusalem. So see, they were able to go to Jerusalem and attend the feast because... Three feasts out the year, all males must attend. The Feast of Passover, or Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. Three times a year, all males must present themselves and attend these feasts. So Paul knew he had to do it, and we're doing it too, to the best of our ability until we go into our land. That's another story. Did you finish that verse 21? I didn't. Go ahead, finish your verse so everyone can hear it. But I will return again unto you, if God will. And he sailed from Ephesus. There you go. So, there you have it. Paul observed the feast. Paul's a New Testament Christian, as you would call him. This is not Old Testament. This is the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. After the death and resurrection of Yahweh. Gotcha. <laughs> but thank you for reading that. You did a great job. Appreciate it. You sound really good. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Paul writing to the Corinthians, talking about the Lord and what he did on that Passover night. Because, see, he ate the Passover with his disciples. And then that night, he went to the Garden of Gethsemane. He was betrayed by Judas. He was taken captive. Once he was taken captive, he was tried, he was beaten, abused. Then that morning, took to Pontius Pilate and was, what they would say, um, sentenced to death. The reason I'm telling you that is because that gives you an accurate understanding of the countdown. So tomorrow is Good Friday because, see, he ate the Passover, which we're about to do now. Then tomorrow will be the first day of unleavened bread. That will be Friday. People call it Good Friday. Why is it a Good Friday? Because the Messiah died for our sins. So we call it Good Friday. He died. And then they had to take him off the cross. Because the, the Shabbat was coming in, the Sabbath day. And that Sabbath day was a high day. This is important. It says that Sabbath was a high day. Not that that high day was a Sabbath. It's, it's, it's interesting how people would change that around. That means the weekly Sabbath that was coming up was a high holy day. It was uh, the second day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That makes it a high day. They had to take him down off the cross because the Sabbath would come in. It, it, it was against the rules to have a dead body on the cross on the Holy Shabbat. They, 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 they didn't want to leave him up there. They couldn't do anything on the Shabbat. When the Shabbat comes, you, gotta, you can't do no work. So they took him down, put him into the tomb. The Sabbath came to an end when the sun went down Saturday night. Sunday morning, the ladies, the women go to the tomb to anoint the body now because they had to put the, the way the, they, they had a ritual that they would anoint the body. He wasn't there. He had risen. Risen from the dead. They didn't know that, but the angels told them that. And so that's how we get the Sunday morning resurrection now you could say well he was probably risen as soon as the sun went down on the shabbat can you prove it you don't know but we do know when they got there on sunday morning he wasn't there the sun was just about to rise so he could have rose at the crack of dawn 
But I'll tell you this, he could not have been dead any longer than that because if he was dead any longer than that, he would have broke the prophecy where David prophesied about the Messiah's death and said that he won't let his body see corruption, meaning that he is not gonna let the body go into rigor mortis, go into a state of decay. A body, as soon as it dies, within 24 hours, goes into rigor mortis, decay. It starts to putrefy and everything. It's really nasty. The prophet say that God won't let that happen to the Messiah. So he could not have been dead for a full 72 hours. I'm making this point, not just for you, but, yeah, yeah. but for my audience. I'm talking to them because a lot of people are having this yeah. discussion with me. So I want them to understand how I see this mm -hmm. and how it fits with the scripture. Absolutely. So, and maybe that might help clear, clarify some things for you too. And we can talk about it more if you want to, you know, feel free to ask me any questions. You don't have to do it all the day, but I know you go home, you think about it. How, how many of you want to stay up I'm, I'm, I'm off tomorrow, so, because the law says I can't work tomorrow because that's a high day. So I'm off tomorrow, but then at the, then I have to, then I'm off on a Saturday and I'm off on Sunday. I go back to work Monday. Anyway, um, how, late, how late are you going to be up today? Oh, I, I up you good? Late, late, late. You good? You, you stay up anyway. I do. All right, you're the night owl. <laughs> I think this is ready. What do you think about that one? That looks good to me. One got cooked faster because it was right up under yeah. the fire. This one here, I'm gonna let mom have this one. I know she had it. Now, let's see, you know, my mom's, mom's using her tea. So she don't look at you when she's talking, or she's kind of like shy, because she don't want you looking at her too. Okay. So this is gonna stay, has nothing, don't, don't take it up. No, 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 no. She's, she'll sometimes talk to you like this. Bop, bop, bop. <laughs> I told her, mom, you gotta stop doing that. She's beautiful. She don't really know that. People don't really judge you by that anymore, but a lot of times, People feel you know insecure about yeah, stuff like that. She's a darling. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad you feel that way. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Let's see. One more verse here. This is what I think I want you to read. First Corinthians chapter eleven, and we will start. Oh uh, well. Let me see. Yeah. Tell you what. Start at verse twenty-four and read down a few verses. I'll tell you when to stop. You can see it, right? Start at verse twenty-four. Twenty-four. Yeah. Verse twenty-four. Nice and loud so they so the camera can hear you. You ain't gotta yell it, but it's a little bit. I don't know what I did. <laughs> I took something. Oh. Oh, oh okay, we'll forgive me. No, that's okay. I don't know what I did. I can just go back to it. Alright. <laughs> and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Stop right there. See? He's telling you, keep doing this thing. Keep doing it. In other words, if you're going to do this in remembrance of me, is that something that, okay, do it one time, you don't do it no more? How are you going to do something that we have in remembrance of him if you're not going to continue to do this once a year? This does not mean you do this every week. It does not mean you do it once a month. You do it at the time appointed. You, we we kind of stop making God be the God that we want to be. We don't just de de determine when we should do these things. He has given us a date. He's given us uh, times. He's a God of order. He's a God of laws. He's not this, oh, well, whenever you feel like doing it, I'm okay with it. So this is the reason why I stress to my people that we got to get on the right page. We got to get accuracy. The closer we get, the more closer we get to the to accuracy of, of, of God's timing, Yah's timing, the better we'll be. We will have the divine chariots, the blessings overhead. We'll have all kinds of miracles taking place in our life. But as long as we're out of order, as long as we're not doing things the right way, then we're going to suffer. We're going to see all kinds of misfortune. We're going to continue to stay in a state of, uh, as we see our people right now in the inner city, struggling with all kinds of violence and drug abuse and sexual immoralities and and and, uh, and just poverty and, and just all kinds of negative things that our people are suffering because they're not following 
the laws. They're not doing it the way God wants us to do it. They don't even know who they are. So my goal to you who's listening to me right now is to really research and understand that African Americans, Latin Americans, Native Americans, you are the children of Israel. Your ancestry goes back. You are the people. You are the people of this book here. This book is your history. It's all about you. It's not a white man's book. A lot of you think all oh, the white man wrote this book. This book was written by black men, men of color. And they were the Israelites. You are their offspring. And the reason we suffer today is because our ancestors broke the laws. And to this day, we don't even know who we are. But we're coming back. We're coming back and we're gonna we're gonna get back on, on the right path. We're gonna we're going to get this covenant just right. We're gonna keep the law, we're gonna keep the statue, and we're gonna call upon the Lord in one consent, and he's gonna come and just like he did for our ancestors in Egypt, where he delivered them out of that house of bondage, he's gonna deliver us. Out of this bondage he's going to bring us into the land that he promised our fathers Abraham Yasak and Yaakov that's Isaac and Jacob I'm saying it in Hebrew for you if you didn't know so he's gonna do that again and when he does that we're gonna we're gonna rise up we're gonna be more than what we ever thought we can be but we gotta get it right now we can't just wait till the last minute we gotta get it right now and so this is the reason why we are practicing these things because this is all this is all Yah's time. Yah is another word for God. So much more, so much more I can say about all this, but I don't want to make this video too long. The meat would get cold. I think we're ready to end it. Have a happy Passover. You want to say something to him, honey? God bless you all. <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's good. All right. So we're having. The Passover. This is the 14th day of Abib, March 28th at evening. We have our wine. We have our unleavened bread, which is hot water cornbread. We have bitter herbs and we have lamb. We're keeping this Passover because the Most High said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. So what he did, he took the wine, he took the bread, he said, Take the bread. So everyone take a piece of bread. Take the bread. Break it. Take a little bite and eat it. He said, this is my flesh broken for you. He said, take, you took the wine. And I'm sorry. And he blessed it. So bless it, y'all. He said, drink. This is my blood shed for you. So we're doing this to remember remembrance of Yahweh Shai. We know that he is our Passover lamb. And I am blessed with a special guest here, Lauren. She has she has honored me with her presence. She came to observe this Passover. She the spirit led her here. She, know, she yeah, she, she knows it. This this is something that this is God ordained. Absolutely. So we're going to have this meal. I'm filming it for you. And um, I'm going to say a general prayer for the whole thing. Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Yahweh Shai, we bless you, Almighty Yahweh. We thank you, Almighty Yahweh. We worship you, Yahweh, because we know you, Yah, are the Allah the God of our fathers, Abraham, Yasek, and Yaakov. And it was you, Almighty Yahweh, with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm that delivered our people, the ancient Israelites, from the house of Egypt. You with a mighty hand smote the firstborn of Egypt, but you delivered all those who kept the blood on the doorposts, who, come, who obeyed your commandments. So we do this now, Yah, because we know that you are our lamb and your blood covers us. And we're looking forward to you, y'all, to come again and deliver us as you did before. And we thank you, Yahweh, for this meal. And we ask you for many, many more. And we ask you, Yahweh, to bless us 
and to keep us <clears throat> in Yahweh Shai's name. Amen. Amen. I can go on and on, but I'll just stop it right there. <laughs> All right, so we go right. dig in. Happy Passover. So, just wanted to say that last night's Passover was great. It was just a few of us. And it doesn't have to be a whole lot of people. It's the Passover. Now, today is the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is also referred to as the Passover. That's the reason why there's confusion. You'll see in the scripture why they call it the, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Passover. If you don't understand that, you're going to get all mixed up. Uh, i like to say that today, to me, really does feel like it's a blessed day. I mean, we've had a lot of bad weather recently. And today, for the first day, which is one of the, the, the special high holy days of the Passover, of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, or I should say, of uh, Yah's calendar, it's a nice, beautiful day. We have sun shining. We got nice weather. I don't even need my coat. A little, last night it got a little chilly. But today is a beautiful day for the first day. And I took off from work because the commandment tells me I can't do no work that day. Only thing I could do is prepare for this feast. Now this feast is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It's going to last for seven days. During those seven days, you must have a feast. You have to have all the bread in your house that rises. Anything that has yeast in it that rises, you need to have that all that removed out by now. You have to have unleavened bread, meaning bread that does not rise for seven days. You must eat some of it. You don't have to eat a whole lot, but you must eat at least a piece of unleavened bread. And that's what I will do. And... <clears throat> do that for seven days and on the seventh day of the feast should be on your calendar the 21st day of Abib. That's the last and great day of the feast. Uh, I'll see what I'll do. I'll try to film some of those. I probably won't film every day but I can't work on that seventh day and I'm not allowed to work on the first day. So I took those days off so I believe I'll be able to film I apologize. I wanted to do this live, but it's a lot. It's very inconvenient because it's. I don't have the ability to to host, cook, teach, and film it all with on live. It just. I had to edit all of this out. So one day we could get there. But for now, um, just wanted to make a little quick video. This is um, explain to you what's going on. I enjoy you guys' comments. Uh, you can share this video. I appreciate any questions, any concerns. I will address everything. I have to put it all together. People are bringing to my attention about using the new moon. Of course, I know all about that. You don't use the moon to determine your month. You use the moon to determine when the feast, when is it time for the season to change. Not for the days not for the beginning of your months. The sun is done for that. That's your great sign. I, I won't go into all the detail in this video about that. I need to make it quick. But some of you may be uh, having your calendar a little short or adding extra days. Well, if you can prove that in scripture, then you're okay. But I'm telling you from what the scripture shows me, you get... 30 days, 30 days, 31 days, repeat. And you do that, you have 364 days in your year. What else can I address? Okay, let's, let's talk about the equinox, the equal lux. There's a difference. Um, some of you are using the Gregorian calendars, March 20th, 21st, as your equal Knox, but I'm stressing to you that that is an inaccuracy. They have deceived you once again. You're you're not getting any, a accurate 
a um, I should say an equal amount of daylight using the equal knocks you need to go by the equal lux and I made a video explaining all that but just want to address that again hmm someone mentioned something I'll bring up in in, in, a, in a future video about uh, the harvest times and stuff well that's a that's a deeper topic we can discuss that in another video um, what else I can't remember anything else so yeah uh, some people have said some positive things and I appreciate it I hope you had a good Passover some of us are on the same page you sh I'm gonna encourage you to upload some videos for yourself show us what you're doing proclaim this date and remember you know it's not gonna always be the 15 it's not gonna always be the 16 to 17 18 it's gonna per per set, proceed down their Gregorian calendar, but it should always be on a Thursday evening. What else can I say? But yeah, be be bold. Proclaim this day. Share it with others. You're not alone out there. I admire your study because you you have gotten we have we have come to the same page. So evidently Yah's working with us and give us time we'll iron out all the little details i'm patient so talk to me discuss these with me challenge me and i like i said i challenge you to challenge me don't just tell me i'm wrong give me some good evidence why i'm wrong you can't and i'm not being boastful I'm just telling you I'm, I'm i'm firm in this i truly believe it because everything i have given you harmonizes with all the books new moons your new moon is not the black moon. And that's another deception. I'll break it all down in another video. A, a, a moon that you should be going by is the full moon. Okay. And again, that is not going to be your determination of when your month begins. Um, the translators have taken two words. I'm sorry, yeah, Hadash and Yeriak. They took those two words and if you really do some investigation of it you'll find out that they have taken the liberties and made that be what they wanted to be and that has caused all this confusion within israel so if we get if we could if we could stop relying on the, the translation of our oppressors and do the research for ourselves and i've done it others have done it if you don't want to take our word for it do it yourself you'll see what we're telling you is accurate can't go by the moon to determine your day, to determine your uh, month. The moon is of a feminine um, cycle. I'm just saying, no, the moon is of a, a feminine origin. You really can't use it. You have to use the masculine sun. Oh, let me talk about this. The sun. Some of you think the sun was created on the fourth day. No, it's not created on the fourth day. What was done on the fourth day was the sun and the moon was set in its position and the laws and the governance of and the ordinances of the sun and the moon was established on the fourth day. I'll break that down. The sun was created on the first day. We call that Sunday of the week. And how do I know this? Well, because you cannot get photosynthesis without the light spectrum of the sun. <sighs> All right, I'm making this too long. I will talk to you more, but hey, look how beautiful it is out here today. It's a nice day. This is a sign to me that I'm on the right timeline.